Hey guys, and welcome back to Anthony's Tennis Hub. My name is Anthony Hirsch, and today I want to talk about Monte Carlo, the uh, draw that came out. I want to give my predictions going through every single section, and then I will go over semifinals and finals predictions as well. I want to kind of preview Monte Carlo in general as well, but mostly kind of give my just draw predictions and what I think is going to happen in this tournament, go over some of the biggest stories uh, in every section and in general as well. I appreciate everybody joining in. This has been uh, this has been a really interesting uh, lead up into Monte Carlo with uh, Sinner winning Miami um, and Alcaraz winning in Indian Wells. Alcaraz is considered the better player on clay courts at this point in their career. It'll be interesting to see how uh, Sinner plays this year on clay courts. He had a good run in Monte Carlo last year, but after that tight loss to Runa, he kind of the wheels kind of fell off a little bit. Djokovic is out of form. He's now walking around without a coach, so we'll see. Uh, we'll see how he does as well. But yeah, it's going to be super interesting. All right, and without further ado, I'm going to break it down section by section, going over all four of the sections. I'm going to go over uh, the seeds of every section, the story of the section, the biggest kind of storyline I think coming out of that section, whether it's a certain player or whether it's a certain rivalry we could get or something or another. The best matches of that section doesn't have to be around one match. It can be potential matchups and also the dark horses and uh, essentially my quarterfinal pick for uh, for that section for every single section. So section one, I've got the seeds are Djokovic, Fritz, Demonor, and Rublev to get into this. Uh, story of the section is Djokovic and how he looks at Monte Carlo, uh, where he struggled more. Since 2015, he has not made the semifinals at this tournament once. He has only made the quarterfinals twice. Uh, if you remember last year, he lost to Lorenzo Musetti from up a set. Uh, great win for Musetti. It really felt like cosmic justice for their match at Roland Garros a few years ago. Tits boss is still looking for his. Um, but, uh, yeah, we'll see how it all plays out. Um, losses are uncharacteristic as well. Losses to Lorenzo Musetti last year. Bokina. Evans, Medvedev are the other losses that he had, and then Team Gofant and Vesely. Those are the other ones as well. Those are the players that he's lost to, and Dominic Team. That's a that's a fair enough loss. Medvedev is strange on clay courts, but Medvedev also a great player, but a little bit strange early in 2019 on clay. But he's he's lost to decent players, but you know Vesely, uh, you know Evans. And uh, even Fokina and Musetti, these aren't players who Djokovic wants to be losing to. Most of these aren't top 10 players. So, you know, I don't know what it is, but it's the slowest clay court on the circuit. Um, you know, it, it causes for a lot of kind of longer rallies where you have to grind it out. And it's uh, it's very windy and it, it makes it so that, you know, Djokovic's weapons like his serve are very much neutralized. There are different issues that happened with Monte Carlo that people talk about with Novak and it's true. And it's been the case for quite a few years now. And, um, I kind of expect it might continue. Uh, but you know, the defending champion also in here with Rublev, we'll see how Djokovic looks at Monte Carlo. Also now he's walking around without a coach. He's, uh, there are question marks on his form, especially since he is almost 37 and, uh, you know, he's still number one. So let's not, you know, Raise too many alarms, uh, even if he loses here, which is not his worst tournament. That's fair. I just think that, uh, you know, there are a few question marks. After losing to Luke Canardi and after losing at the Australian Open, there are a few question marks. Um, so the matches of the section, best matches of the section, I've got Wawrinka versus Dimnor and Musetti versus Spritz, both amazing round one matches. Wawrinka just turned 39. Um, he beat Ramos Vignola, so he has an incredible record against in the last tournament. Uh, then he lost his second uh, round against, I believe, against Navone, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, yeah, he lost to Navone 6-2 in the third. Um, yeah, for Wawrinka, it's about running out of gas. He can still hit incredible forehands and backhands. It's just about kind of running out of gas as the uh, as the match goes, as the tournament goes. And uh, we'll see against Demonor. I don't think Clay is Demonor's best surface, so it could be an opportunity for something. Um, and that's why I have him as a dark horse as well. Another dark horse I have is Musetti, who's taking on Fritz. And another uh, a great potential matchup I have in my best matches of the section is Djokovic versus Musetti round three. 
Uh, Musetti started playing much better tennis in my in the Sunshine Devil. Uh, he was kind of really on worse terms for a while, but started playing better. Uh, you know, round three, I also put Fritz in parentheses there because uh, if if I'm putting a potential matchup uh, that includes a player that isn't supposed to get to that place and it's supposed to be a seed, I, I'll put the seed in uh, who's supposed to get there. That was Fritz. But we could get Djokovic versus Musetti. And uh, we'll see. I like, like I said, it happened last year, and Djokovic can struggle in these conditions, and there are question marks on him more than more than a couple. So uh, we'll see what happens. Djokovic versus Rublev quarterfinal will be crazy because uh, Rublev and Djokovic notoriously one sided head to head. One time that Rublev beat him was on clay courts in Belgrade. A bit of an asterisk, but it was a final, and um, you know, you know, you can forget the asterisk. It'll still give Rublev some confidence beating him on clay courts. Um, and yeah, we'll see what happens. Rublev has been in very strange form since the, I think, Dubai incident. Would be fair to say, Sunshine Double, he lost badly both weeks. Um, very not himself against Lehechka and Indian Wells, despite Lehechka playing amazing. And then Miami, I believe it was Rusevo. No, it was, Ma- sorry, it was Mahach who took him out. That is right. Uh, Mahach took him out. Mahach played great too, but Rublev just not, you know, the aggressive kind of just on it, consistent player that we're used to seeing from him. And I know I said aggressive and consistent, but that's what Rublev is. Um, so yeah, it's just not been good. And, um, from Rublev and we'll see, he needs to defend here. Both Runa and Rublev are defending and they both had bad losses at Miami. So bad early losses. Uh, but yeah, those are some of my matches of the section, some of my dark horses. Overall, my pick, uh, is actually, despite everything I said about Novak, and I actually think, I don't know how it's going to pan out with everybody doing predictions, but I'm going to make a prediction about the overall tennis YouTube predictions. <laughs> and I'm going to say that a lot of people will have Rublev defeating Djokovic in the Monte Carlo quarterfinals, and it might happen. Absolutely might happen. I was thinking this over for about five minutes before I made my pick. Maybe more than that, actually. And uh, But I have Djokovic defeating Rublev in three sets. I went with the GOAT. I went with the number one. Um, I picked Djokovic to do well last year as well. And I'm not necessarily saying he's going to win the whole tournament. Stick around. But I am saying that... Uh, Rublev really seems weird to me recently in terms of how he usually is, and that's a bad sign for me. When he has to be at his mental best against a player like Djokovic, Djokovic has shown up early in Monte Carlo. I still like Djokovic on clay. He's won this tournament twice. I know recent years has been great, to be fair, in 2021. Um, uh, in 2022, he had, he was kind of coming in, in into the Fokina match, had kind of a weird, Weird, uh, weird place after the Australia debacle and everything like that. He had only played Dubai. Um, but you know, it's, it's not been great, but also I, I'm not the one to say that it can't completely turn around. Sometimes he needs to play into form to get into tournaments and he's just had some early losses. If he can get to the quarterfinals, play against Rublev, who hasn't really been himself. Um, I don't know. Rublev did well on fast grass courts last year and in Paris. On clay courts, we'll see. I uh, He absolutely can, and Rublev seems to play great here. He won last year. So it is possible. I was like 50-50. I decided to go with Novak off of a gut feeling that I have, that Novak is really going to be motivated to prove himself in this tournament as well. And if he can get through those early matches, I don't expect Musetti to beat him twice in a row. And if he can beat Musetti, for example, that would give him great confidence. Fritz would be a great kind of, maybe a preparation for the Rublev match if it is Fritz. Um, but yeah, we'll see, we'll see what happens. I don't expect Musetti to be Djokovic and Rublev absolutely can. I'm going to go with Novak, which I think is almost the surprise pick. I don't know. Maybe not, but anyway, that's kind of what I'm going with there. Um, but yeah, Demonor, by the way, uh, against Wawrinka, he's never even been in the third round here. It's the only, uh, only Masters tournament that, uh, he's, uh, played only three times, uh, in his career, it's the only Masters tournament he's never been to the third round. Um, you know, a few of his losses have been okay. One was against Fokina, another against Rublev. Fokina was in 2021 before he reached the final. Rublev in 2022 before, uh, before he won the tournament. Struve, uh, last year, so Struve is obviously going to make the final if we're going by patterns. But, um, Demonor, I think, uh, is uh, going to be very kind of upsettable, so, 
we'll see what kind of happens in the bottom half of this section as well. So I kind of wanted to point that out as well. And also, I also want to say before I move on to section two, Fritz maybe can be a threat. I'm not necessarily going to predict that. But Fritz played really well here last year and played a three-setter in the semifinals against Rublev. He was moving great on clay, really stepped up his game big time. And I think he believes in himself in general and on clay courts. So, um, yeah, I think that that could be, uh, that could be really, really exciting if that does end up happening. And I like how Fritz played against Djokovic at the Australian Open, where Djokovic should be indestructible, but he played well against him there too. So, Anyway, we'll see what happens, but I just wanted to point that out as a maybe kind of thing. Seeds in Section 2 is Alcraz, Umber, Herkoch, and Rude. Story of the section, how does Alcraz look here? Can anyone uh, stop Can anyone stop him? He's only ever played one match here. That was to Korda, a loss in three sets in 2022. Uh, Center potentially has Korda in round, uh, round, round two, so that could be interesting. Korda is a big player as well. I'll get to that in Section 4, but... Um, yeah, how does Alcraz look here? He hasn't done great on super slow clay courts in his career so far. Not the slowest of slow, like Roland Garros, like Monte Carlo, like Rome. Um, it hasn't really been there for him like that. But listen, I think he's going to – I don't think that's much of anything. I think he'll find it. And, um, yeah, I mean, he's uh, notoriously done well in tournaments where he hasn't played that many times before. So I think he can quickly figure it out. If he wins the whole tournament, we'll see. But uh, that's going to be the big thing in this section. I would say that it's looking pretty good. I, it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of players that on clay courts are going to realistically be able to take him out. Uh, but you never really know for sure. Matches of the section, Alcaraz versus Rude quarterfinal, also Alcaraz versus Umber round three. So, Rude is interesting. Rude is playing really well this week in Estoril, and I, I think he's a lead on clay courts. I really do. Can he beat the guys necessarily ahead of him, especially ahead of him on clay courts? Like, I don't know. But I think he's a potentially top five, at least top ten clay court player. I do think so. Last year at Roland Garros, Bagel Zverev uh, nearly took the first set against Djokovic in the final. Was playing good tennis to rattle anybody on the surface, and uh, hu- hitting huge forehands and just just playing so smart and rallying so well from the back of the court. Um, and uh, yeah, I, th- I think on clay courts, Rude is fantastic at the way he moves on clay courts. His forehands on clay are so effective um, with the high RPM forehands, and uh, I mean he got gets so much time on the back end, moves so well. Uh, he plays all the time on clay practices there. He, his footwork running around his back end is crazy as well, especially on clay courts. I love, I think Rude is fantastic on clay. He's already reached two Roland Garros, uh, finals, and I think that means something. So, Alcaraz and Monte Carlo has only played one match. He lost it to Corda. Is it impossible that Casper beats Alcaraz? I might be one of the only people who say that. I say no. I say no. But I don't think it'll happen. And that's why I uh, just skipped over Dark Horses, by the way. My Dark Horse in this section is Lahechka, who uh, Lahechka did well here last year. He beat Rusevori and Dimitrov in straight sets. Then he went three sets against Fritz, took the first set there. And he played really well in Indian Wells. Not so good in Miami, where he lost to Popperin, but uh, in straight sets. But um, he did well in Indian Wells. He did really well here last year. So I have a strong Dark Horse in Lahechka. But yeah, my quarterfinal prediction is Alcraz defeats Rude in three sets. I'm going to go three sets. I'm going to give a set to Rude, and I think after this match, if my hypothetical situation happens here, people will be like, okay, Rude is Rude is confirmed like he's a top, top, top guy on clay courts for against nearly anybody. And to me, it's already kind of clear, but I I hope that Rude can prove himself in this way, and I hope he can step up in the big matches, because that's what really hurts him. That's what really hurts Casper. He's fantastic, but it's stepping up in those big matches. It really is for Casper, I think, um, especially against the top five players and in the finals, that's kind of Casper's issue, in my opinion, especially at 500s, 1000s. So we'll see if Rude can step it up. I'm going to give him a step. I'm going to give Alcaraz the win. Number three seeds, Medvedev, Tsitsipas, Hatchinoff, and Zvera. Story of the section. This section is stacked with many players who can take the opportunity that's here in this section. Lots of kind of, it feels very even field, especially in the section with Medvedev, who notoriously hasn't been as successful on clay courts as he has been, you know, 
with the other surfaces, which is why he's a top four seed and why this is Medvedev's section. Here are the players that are in this section that might have a chance here that I think are interesting. Here are the players that are in section three. So you have Dan, Dan Evans, you have Jari, Echeverry, Jera, Tsitsipas, Nori, Hatchnoff, Francisco Serendolo, Montpiece, Thompson, also Sebastian Offner. That's a load of players that no one is that dangerous that you're like, or few are that dangerous to me, in my opinion, that are like, oh, he's the guy that's absolutely going to get through the section or something like this. But I will say, there's a lot of opportunity. I can imagine a lot of those players, and Sitsabas is in there, and despite him losing to Shapo, Shapovalov, Denis Shapovalov in, um, in Miami pretty badly, um, he's not been in great form, but he picks it up in Monte Carlo, and uh, he didn't do great here last year, but so he, li- he likes these conditions. He's won here twice, two years in a row, I believe. Um, so, you know, watch out for Sitsabas in that section as well. Um, matches of the section, Echeverry versus Jari, round one. Two fantastic clay court players. If you're there in Monaco, I absolutely recommend you joining into this match because it's going to be crazy. And I think it's going to bring an awesome atmosphere a, a, as well with two South American players. It's going to be awesome. Um, Jari had such a great atmosphere in Miami. So I think that that's only going to continue. I'm very excited to watch this one. Um, and uh, Jari probably has more kind of big shots compared to Echeverry, I would say. But Echeverry is just so solid as well from the back of the court. And um, yeah, Jari also has the options to kind of finish it off at the net. And I don't think he'll play as big a role on clay, but we'll see what happens. He's been in good form. He'll have confidence from uh, beating, you know, he sometimes struggles against the lower ranked players more than the higher ranked players. But he um, the consistency, but from beating Alcaraz and Buenos Aires... Uh, from beating, uh, who was it I beat in Miami that was very good? I'm kind of going on a blink, but, um, looking into it. Was it Casper? It was Casper in straight sets, yeah. Uh, beat Draper, Sabath, Wielch, and Casper before losing to Medvedev in a fairly close match, actually. So, we'll see what happens with Jari, but, uh, that could be good. Monfils versus Medvedev round two. Speaks for itself. Uh, Monfils is very good on clay, so I'd watch out for that. Two of the more talented players on the tour, in my opinion. Medvedev versus Hatchnoff round three. Um, yeah, that could be quite interesting as well. Uh, I was actually debating having Hatchnoff get the win against Medvedev. Um, it plays so slow in Monte Carlo, and it's kind of funny. Monte Carlo is actually the first semifinal of a big tournament that he ever reached. I mentioned it earlier, baby Djokovic in the quarterfinals here in 2019 which overall was one of the crazier Masters tournaments. You'll see Fagnini beating Lyovic in the final, which is uh, just so crazy. Uh, shout out to Fabio for getting that Masters title. He's got the talent for it, but um, it was amazing that that went into place in the way that it did. Uh, but yeah, that tournament was crazy. And Medvedev, in general, I don't think these conditions will suit him that greatly. Um, and yeah, we'll see what happens. He had a very close match against Zverev last year. Um before losing to, I believe it was to Runa. I believe it was to Runa here, if I'm not mistaken. It might have been to Struff. He, he lost to Runa and to Struff in uh, my, uh, Madrid and Monte Carlo. Um, but I don't remember exactly which one was which. But anyway, uh, the Med- Medvedev versus Hatchinoff could be close. I like Hatchinoff. Clay is probably one of his worst surfaces, to be honest. But I think he's very surface versatile. So that could be very good. And their last few matches, they've had a few close matches. Um, like in October last year, I think it was in Vienna, they had a very close match. And uh, also in uh, Miami, in the semifinals uh, last year, they had a very close match as well. They won three sets. So uh, I think Hatchnoff will probably like the surface more than Medvedev. But Medvedev is a higher tier player. So it, that one could be really good. I think that one's going to be a really, really interesting match. Compelling. Uh, Dark Horses, Jari and Echeverry, the winner of that one. Just two great clay guys. Quarterfinal pick kind of went back and forth, and I almost didn't have Medvedev even making it here. Hatchinoff was really ringing in my head, but overall, I said Zverev defeats Medvedev in the quarterfinals in three sets. Zverev's been in great form. It's kind of, kind of hard to choose against him. There, there was one point separating these two when they played here last year. I think Zverev will be looking for revenge, also from Australia. Medvedev doesn't love these conditions. I, I don't even think he's coming in with absurd levels of confidence, but... He, he's not been doing badly. I mean, 
I think I saw a stat like in the last 52 weeks, maybe in master short miss, I don't remember exactly, but he's 13 and one against top 10 players outside of, um, center Alcaraz and Djokovic. That is the highest rate of any player, um, of, uh, any player on tour, even better than center, even player better than Djokovic when you include Medvedev into the, into the count. Um, it's even better than, um, you know, than those guys. So, uh, Medvedev has been very good. He's just been losing to those guys pretty much. But yeah, Zverev, you know, beat Medvedev in Cincinnati. I could expect a similar thing here on conditions. I think Zverev will just enjoy more. I'm not fully confident in that, but that's the pick I'm going to go with. Section number four, my seeds of the section. I've got Rude and I've also got, uh, sorry, not Rude. I've got Runa. Sorry. Uh, how many times has Runa been called Casper? Now I, I, I apologize to Holger. I apologize. Um, Dimitrov, Bublik, and Sinner. Um, <laughs> uh, story of the section, um, who will get through the top half to give a, uh, the top half of the section to give a big test to Sinner so that we can gauge his level on play. Sinner is likely going to beat whoever gets through and faces him in the quarterfinals, but it's going to be interesting to see who can do that. And, uh, will it be Runa or Dimitrov? Likely, or will it be somebody else? Berrettini's in there, Rusabori's in there, Matteo Arnaldi is in there. But, um, yeah, he's also gonna have a good test against Cordero Fokina in his second round match, which I mentioned earlier. Davidovich Fokina taking on Sebastian Corda, and the winner plays Sinner. So that's gonna be interesting. Um, but yeah, Runa and Dimitrov at the top. Matches of the section, I couldn't choose. I just put a whole lot here at Watch Out for Section 4. This is the best section for matches, in my opinion. Uh, or at least potential matchups. Berrettini versus Dimitrov for round two. Berrettini has Kachmanovic. If he get, gets through that, he'll play Dimitrov. That's amazing. Uh, Runa versus Arnaldi round two could be great. Sinner versus Korda or Fokina round two. And then also I've got Runa versus Dimitrov round three and also Sinner versus Runa or Dimitrov quarterfinals. There's just a lot of good stuff going on here. I, I really couldn't choose. Dark Horses, Fokina, Davidovich, Fokina, and Korda. I've also got Arnaldi and I've also got Berrettini. Um, Bertine, I don't know. I, I don't know if he's going to really be a big, big dark horse to watch, but he's just such a, you know, when you see his name, you remember how good he was for that little time, you know, getting to the quarterfinal of every slam, get, making the semifinals of three of the four, and just being so, such a um, big force on the tour, or at least a, a force on the tour that was really contending for uh, for titles, and you didn't really want to see his name, have big weapons. Um and, uh, you know, I, uh, really stood out. So I, I just want to give a shout out, but especially Fokina, Corda, and Arnaldi, I would give as dark horses. Um, and Corda and Fokina in particular. Fokina's had good success here, but he's not been in great form recently. My quarterfinal prediction is Sinner defeats Dimitrov in two sets. Um, Dimitrov and Runa is going to be, uh, going to be interesting if we do get it. But, um, yeah, Runa lost 6-1 to 6-1 to Mirajan against Dimitrov. Dimitrov actually has had very good success in Monte Carlo. This is actually Dimitrov's highest win rate at a Masters tournament. 68% win percentage at this Masters. Funnily enough, it's actually one percentage point out of Paris indoors. That's the second highest win rate, which is number two, despite being this one being the slowest Masters on clay courts. That's the fastest Masters on indoor hard courts, which shows how talented and uh, ver surface versatile Dimitrov is that he can adapt in that way and have those two be his best. But anyway, this is his best percentage at a um, best win rate at a Masters. And uh, let's see how he looks on the clay. Madrid Masters, now they reach the final of Miami, is the only Masters event where Dimitrov has not reached um, at least the semifinals. So he would join a very elite group of players uh, that have reached the semifinal finals at all the Masters. Zverev, for example, has not done that. Medvedev has not done that. And uh, there's most, all, nearly all players that you can think of have not done that. So that would be a great accomplishment. So we'll see how Dimitrov starts off his clay season and if he can keep the momentum. But Runa or Dimitrov could be very, uh, very interesting. But Runa, I feel like I like him more on clay. But Dimitrov, I, I like his form way better at the moment. So that could be really, really good. 
And um, yeah, that's part of why I have uh, I have uh, Dimitrov beating Runa. Dimitrov also beat Runa in Basel, so he has that confidence going for him. And Dimitrov, like I said, likes playing in Monte Carlo. He likes these conditions. He's done well here. Two semifinals, very, very good. One of the semifinals was in 2022. So Dimitrov likes these conditions, and I've got a repeat of the Miami final. I've got Sinner beating Dimitrov in two sets. Um, I think we're going to see similar things. I think Sinner is going to surprise some people by how well already he's playing on clay course. And I'm just going to say, I don't fully think it's the thing of, oh, he's so good, it's going to adapt to every surface. I think there's some of that. But I, you know, having so much, so many different weapons and ways to play. But I also just think he's shown success on clay in the past. It's not always super, like, obvious you know, center hits big, he's got on clay. Like, Rublev won Monte Carlo last year. And uh, center's got a lot of weapons. He's improving a lot. He slides a lot, on, even on hard courts. That will do well on clay. He moves very well on clay. And um, I think there's a lot of reasons to uh, be excited about center on clay courts. And uh, his shot tolerance is way better than ever on clay. Or, sorry, in general. So that's going to translate to clay courts. And, uh, yeah, I think that center is center somebody to watch. I think people are going to be... Uh, surprise, but if you saw, you know, if you saw 2020 Roland Garros as a teenager, how well Center was playing on clay, if you saw that Umlock final against Alcaraz, how well he was playing, even if you saw last year's Ma- his Monte Carlo run, and then his Ma- first couple matches in Rome against Kakanakis, for example, where he won half the golden set, won the first 12 points of the match playing unplayable tennis, um, and, you know, just some good matches on clay course. He's reached three fourth rounds on Roland Garros. Uh, which is not uh, some things you can't say for, I think, Wimbledon and U.S. Open, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe U.S. Open now after last year. But, um, you know, he uh, he can play on clay. And I, th- I think that people will be surprised. I do think likely it's his worst surface, but I think he'll be good on it. So I just wanted to put that out there. For semifinal predictions, I've got Alcaraz defeating Djokovic in two sets. I've got Sinner defeating Zverev in two sets. Now, I know I've got Alcaraz, Djokovic, and Sinner. Um, also, Zverev, who's probably the fifth best player in the world, maybe. Um, he has a say at it. Uh, I know that I um, said that uh, I know that I have the three, you know, of the four best players in the semifinals. Doesn't always happen, although it's happened a couple times. But I think this is actually a surprise, like a surprise pick in some ways, like I said about Djokovic. I don't think, I think a lot of people have Djokovic losing either to Musetti or to Rublev. Uh, so <laughs> let's see, uh, let's see what happens. Uh, but I do have Djokovic making it to this point. Alcaraz might, uh, will have some, uh, you know, question marks on him as well. Um, particularly when it comes to adapting to these conditions, having only played one match here in the past, which is pretty crazy in itself. Um, but yeah, Alcaraz beating Djokovic in two sets. I think it's the thing of Djokovic has lost here, you know, many years. This would be his first semifinal, which would be great. Alcaraz is so, Good on clay courts. If he is playing the good high level tennis to get to the semis, I expect him, I expect him to step up to the plate. I also think he'll have the big motivation on his side after losing in straight sets at the ATP finals to Djokovic and, uh, losing in Cincinnati as well. Back on clay courts where he, uh, beat him in Madrid. Uh, he had a close match against him at Roland Garros before he started cramping. Uh, I think this could be great, but I think Alcraz will beat him in straight sets. And, uh, you know, that'd be, uh, that'd be really kind of compelling and exciting. If we get it, and uh, yeah, I, I I hope we got more of these kind of uh, young young uh, young future kind of star and current stars in Alcaraz um, taking on you know greats of the game. So uh, that would be great. Sinner beats Zverev in two sets. They played here in Monte Carlo a few years ago, and Zverev won in a third set tiebreaker. Great drama, but Sinner at this point is honestly mentally levels above Zverev. Levels above Zverev. Plays the pressure points way, way better. And uh, I think he's going to, I think Sinner is going to, he plays it one match at a time. I think Sinner is going to care so much about winning this match because he's had a problem against Sasha, who beat him at the U.S. Open, the last guy to beat him at a major. And I think he's going to be coming in here with uh, with revenge on the brain. And uh, I just, I just like Sinner, you know, getting it done and showing what he's made of on clay courts because I think he can play on clay, and I think some people are going to be surprised. Got so close a few years ago. I think he can get over the line um, here at this point. And, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Uh, Zverev got to the semifinals of Miami, lost to Dimitrov. But, um, you know, even there I felt like Zverev probably mentally could have played some of the 
uh, some of the matches, uh, some of the points a little bit better against Dimitrov. Uh, we'll see if he even gets through that section. Titsubas is going to be a big danger for Zverev. I do have Zverev making it through also against Medvedev, but um, yeah, I, I definitely have Sinner getting through, and that would be very interesting. Final, the first time that Sinner and Alcross play in a, bit, a final of a big tournament. Uh, not a crazy pick. They've been two of the best players in the world for a while. And um, just what uh, Alcross won Indian Wells and Sinner won in uh, Miami. But uh, this would be the first time that they play in the final of a big tournament. It would be a, an absolute party if we get it. It would be really interesting, too, on clay court. Center having just won Miami. I've got Alcaraz defeating Center in three sets, just like in Indian Wells. But I kind of think it will be even closer than it was in Indian Wells. And uh, But I've got Alcaraz, who I think just is more confident, more comfortable on clay courts. And uh, it would be quite crazy if he wins the whole tournament after only having played one match Monte Carlo. But Alcaraz... It's like 85 plus percent win rate on clay or something crazy like that, at least since I think like 20, mid 2021. He's been phenomenal. And, uh, I think, I think he's going to have something to prove on clay courts. And, um, that would be a really, really cool match if we get it. And, uh, you know, he's going to switch things up. Um, is, uh, is center. Center is going to switch things up. It is going to be on clay, which is different from Indian Wells, but Indian Wells is also slow surface, but it's on clay. So. Sinner is going to switch things up, try different things, and, um, you know, make sure that uh, Alcaraz isn't able to dictate in the way that he was in their uh, Indian Wells match. Um, there's also the asterisk of Sinner was dealing with injuries there, but Alcaraz earned the win there. He was playing phenomenal. And uh, we'll see what happens if we get this in the final, but it would be really fun and great shot making on a natural surface that really, I think, really accentuates different kind of, you know, having a big skill set. And, um, you know, Sinner and Alcaraz have that. Umag was fantastic in the final. It would be great if we see them play in a big, big final on clay as well. And hopefully Alcaraz can kind of keep up the great serving that he was showing in Indian Wells and in Miami as well. Because uh, he's going to need it against Sinner, who's definitely going to be serving really, really well. It's not going to be probably as, you know, crucial or hitting as many aces as on, you know, in Miami, for example. But, uh it's still going to be a big deal. And I think that Alcaraz is going to show what he's made of. He loves the clay to set up the points and uh center's, you know, power of shot is not going to be able to hit through the court as well, kind of like in Indian Wells. And that's why I think Alcaraz who moves so just unbelievably well on clay is going to have the upper hand here. And um yeah, it's just the confidence and um center's confident too, but the confidence on clay might take Alcaraz over the line. This would be great. If we get it, it would be a really compelling match. All right, that was my kind of draw predictions. Um, like I said at the start, I think some of the biggest storylines, Djokovic, you know, playing Monte Carlo for, you know, the uh, the eighth time since he won it and not having gotten to the semifinals any of those times makes it really compelling to see how he does. We'll see how he looks without uh, Ivan Isovic. And um, yeah, I think Alcaraz Center... Medvedev, how he looks after having won the last clay masters that was played is going to be crazy too. So um, I'm excited to watch it. I'll be here to talk about the tournament with future videos. Please don't forget to subscribe to Anthony Tennis Up if you are new. Please don't forget to like if you enjoyed it as well. I'll see you guys on more few, uh, videos down the road. I'll be back with uh, shooting with the uh, other background that I have. See you at the next one.